Thank you, Pastor Hasi. Good, good morning, good morning. Um, I trust God for a beautiful day and a beautiful sermon in this morning. I, I just want to, to um, uh, say that we are live on Facebook, yes, and we are recording our service. Uh, if we can please make sure that we are all muted and um, enjoy the service this morning. You know, I, I used to, to make a joke with, 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 with Bishop and I said, you know, I'm the standing guy. And this morning I am honored and privileged to support my wife. She was supposed to minister this morning. And, um, but due to some circumstances, she's unable to minister, but I am there. God has graced me, God has blessed me, and I am there. So, so this morning I pray for God's grace and God's mercy as we go along and minister his word this morning. Um, beloved, I, I just want to make sure that, that you can hear me clearly and that I am quite visible uh, to everyone. If it's okay, just give me a thumbs up or something. Uh, good, thank you very much. I enjoy that. Um, so beloved, this morning, you, you see, when, when you do something and you are standing in, sometimes you have to go with what is laid up already. So the theme for today deals with faith in the purpose of godly women. But, but we are not going to go through the whole Bible and, and, and collect every godly woman that we can. We are just going to select with us. The, the two that my wife selected was Leah and Esther. So we are not going to deviate from that and, 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 and try to get into the pattern of, of what God wants to say to his people today. And I trust that we will learn from it, we will get something that we can apply to our lives, and we will uh, prosper from it and, and, and just be the person that God wants us to be. There's so much that we can learn from the Word of God. I, I want to, to, to read from the Word of God, and I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 29, Genesis chapter 29 from verse 31, and uh, from verse 31 to 35. And I will read also Esther chapter 2, verse 17, only the one verse. But uh, I'm reading, and I, I am reading from uh, the New International Version. And um, I trust that we will understand that clearly what God is going to say to us today. Verse 31 reads, if we have it and we're all there, well, verse 31 reads, it says, When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. We know the story of Jacob and Rachel and Leah. We know that Jacob came to, 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 to the family and he said, I will work for you, for your daughter Rachel. And he was deceived after seven years and he wakes up in the morning and he found Leah in his bed and he has to work another seven years for Rachel. But now we find that the Bible is clear about it. The Bible says that when God saw, when God saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, to have children, and Rachel remained childless. The, the, the King James Version is, is so clear that sometimes when we look in translation and we, we don't find the right words is translated from the Hebrew of the time unto the English of what we know, we find that the King James Version say when, when God saw that Leah was hated, <laughs> such a strong word that she was hated. The, the thing is that Jacob did not expect Leah but he never loved Leah, he never looked at Leah, he never uh, saw Leah. And then God, such an honorable God that he is, he respected the marriage of Leah and Jacob. He did not go and say that the father was wrong, the father was 
was was was cunning and he was a crook and he, he did not do any of those things. All that God did was he respected the marriage of Leah and Jacob. So now when, when he does that, he, he, he respects the whole marriage. He respects the whole union, which means when, when, when they were uh, being together, he respected the fact that both women had to, had to bear children. But then in verse 31, he says he saw that she was not loved. Now, if Jacob did it on purpose, or Jacob did it because he did not love her, he did not even try, he did not put an effort because he was now for the next seven years again had to work for the wife of his dreams. <coughs> so we are now faced with the fact that God saw. Beloved, we can do whatever we want to. We can speak the nice words. I think he, he, he spoke nice words and said, uh, you can stay with me. You don't have to go. I will bear you. But, 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 but in his heart, he says, I don't love this woman. I, I don't want this woman. And so it's the same with us. God sees deep into our hearts. God, God notices everything that happens in our hearts. And he as he sees it, he acts accordingly. If you, if you show love to God, God shows, he, he loves us anyway. But if, if, if things don't work out the way they should, we cannot blame God because God saw it. It is the attitude of our heart and how we deal with situations like this. Now, since Leah became fruitful <coughs> and Rachel became childless, in verse 32, Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben. For she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. Ladies, this is, this is an age-old uh, saying, and it's an age-old uh, teaching or advice that people give. They, they always say that having a child with a man does not make the man love you. This is where it comes from. Leah gave, uh, got pregnant, she gave Jacob a son, and it, it came down to the fact that she hoped and she said, now that I've given him a son, I've given him an heir. It is important for the Hebrew people to have an heir for their kingdoms and for, 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 for their your whole inheritance so that their names can, can be carried forward. It was such a big thing to have a boy child as a baby for the man that you love. Now she had the compassion and the love for this man, which was not returned. Beloved, just think about it. You and I, uh, God loves us so much, but his love is not returned. And whatever we do, I can be the best man there is on earth when it comes to teaching and preaching. I can be the greatest bishop, but if there is no love for God, then, then, then the return, you see this, Jacob was good to Leah and she loved him with all her heart. She was even prepared to bear a child for him, but that love was not returned. And this is what is so hard for God to understand, that he loves us, he provides for us, he gives to us, and, 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 and he sees everything that goes on in our life, but we don't return his love. We do things that are contrary to the word of God. Jacob did it. He, he had, he had, his, he, he spent time with his wife and, 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 and sometimes as, as, as children of God, we, take, we tend to not uh, speak the right thing or speak the truth as it is. Jacob had intercourse with his wife and that was to him uh, some form of showing compassion, but it was not the love that Leah was seeking. We go to church, we do all the ministries, we do everything, we go into the community, we feed them, we clothe them, we give them warm blankets, we make sure that, but that is not what God wants. We are the extension of his hand, but we must love him first. We must return the love that he has for us. And that is what is so painful in the fact that God loves us dearly. Leah loved this man with all her heart. She gave her everything. She gave her womanhood. She gave all that she had as a woman. She had faith. 
that if I remain faithful to this man, this man will love her. She had faith knowing that if I exercise what I have to exercise in order for him to love me, then I will do it. That is the faith that she had. And God saw her affliction. In the in James Version, it says, God saw her affliction. Here it says, her mercy. She was afflicted, but God saw. Whenever you are afflicted in any instance of your life, whenever people talk bad about you, whenever people slander your name, whenever people curse you, whenever there is opposition in your work in the Lord, let me tell you something. God sees that affliction. God sees that curse that's spoken. God sees the wrong things that is done against you. God pays attention to all our afflictions. And God acts accordingly. This child's name was Reuben because God saw. You see, we need to understand that whenever God sees something, God allowed it. It says in the verse 31, it says God saw that Leah was not loved. So he did two things. The one he made Leah fruit, fruitful and she can conceive and the other she, he made uh, Rachel childless. But none of Rachel and Leah did anything wrong or did anything good. The only difference is that Jacob loved Rachel and not Leah. But God, in his wisdom, was teaching us basic principles. We sometimes walk in the street. We saw people and we, we, we make up our mind. I don't want to have fellowship with that one because I don't like him. I have no good thing to say about somebody, but we don't know the background. We don't know who this person is. We haven't spent time and, and, and make an effort to know this person, but we make up our minds. Now, this is what God says. You make up your mind, but you don't consult me. We come into certain situations with our minds made up. We don't consult God. We fight battles in life and we do things according to our own wisdom, but we don't consult God. We want to do it according to our standards, according to our disciplines, according to our experience, according to our knowledge and understanding. But we don't consult God throughout the Bible from Moses. To, 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 to uh, Jehoshaphat, wherever we look, those were the guys when the, who served God and they consulted God first before doing anything. They had a relationship with God they spoke to. Now you and I come to this point that God sees our affliction, but we try to do it our way. Leah said, if I give him a son, if I give him a son, God saw my affliction, but if I give him a son, he will love me. There is no guarantee to that. There is no guarantee to that. She sees that, that, that now my husband should love me, but it doesn't happen. Let's see what happens further. She conceived again. We, we increase our efforts to impress but who do we impress? Who, who, who do we follow? Who do we regard as the person to make decisions on our regard? Who do we do? Am I doing it for the pastor? Am I doing it for the church? Am I doing it for somebody to see me, for my boss to see me? Who am I doing it for? We need to understand whatever we do, we're doing it for God. She conceived again. And again, she, she gave birth to another son. Ha! She gave birth to Simeon because the Lord heard that I am not loved. He gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. In the months of our afflictions, God does great things. Everything seems to be negative in our lives. Everything seems to go against us. Everything seems to 
do not play out the way we want to see it play out. But God is in control. God is taking charge of all our situations. God is saying to himself, I will give you yet another son because I heard you. So when God hears, it means that she was crying out to God and said, God, why am I not loved? You and I are crying out to God and saying, God, why are we going through so much challenges? Father, why am I circumstances not changing? We cry out to God and God hears. This tells me something great that God is always on the lookout to hear what his children is about to say and is ready to have fellowship with his children. But you and I have got our own motives. We have got our own thing that we want to do and we don't spend time with the Lord so he cannot hear because we don't speak to him and ask him. We don't spend time with the Lord. She says he heard. He heard that I'm not loved. She was crying out. She was saying to the Lord, here am I. You know that I, I'm not the first choice of this man, but Lord, he does not love me. What am I to do? And God gives good gifts. You know a child is a good gift that God gives unto us. So many people say, I don't want this child. We get a lot of orphans. Why? Because people feel, I'm not ready for a child. I'm going to give them up for adoption. I'm going to take them to an orphanage. I am not ready. But I did not ask God, is, this, uh, is there any purpose to you allowing me to have child? <laughs> yes. We say to ourselves, I am not ready for this child. I, I don't want to be bound by the responsibility of having child. But in this case, Leah said, if I have a child, my husband may love me. This is the second boy. And this blue-eyed girl, the girl that he loves so much, is not giving him any child. I am the one. I am the one that can uh, uh, make sure his inheritance lives on. He's, he's, he's got heirs for his, for his wealth and his kingdom or whatever he owns. She gave birth and she says, because the Lord heard. <laughs> Beloved, let us take the stance and say to ourselves, God hears every cry. God hears every need that we have and bring before him. When we bring it to his, to, to his throne, he hears every need. He knows it, but he wants to hear it. He sees it, but he wants to hear it. That tells me we need to have constant and continuous conversation with God. Let us not allow this thing to die between us and God. When the Israelites were in the desert, God provided manna every day. So there was no way that you could stay away from God more than 24 hours because your supply of manna would be finished and done for 24 hours. God said every day new blessings, every day new manner, every day you come and fetch. You cannot keep for tomorrow unless it is for the Sabbath, then you can keep. God was in full control, but he did not want anybody to stay away from him longer than 24 hours. God enjoys and celebrates our conversation and fellowship. Let us get it into our system that God wants to have fellowship with us and let us really put it forward and say, I am going to spend time with God in his presence, his fullness of joy, and there is victory in his presence. Let us spend time with God because he hears. So whatever we say to God, he hears. She said, because the Lord heard that I'm not love, and he blessed me with another son, Simeon. Israel doesn't love her. 
He still doesn't pay attention. He's still faffing around Rachel. He's still making sure that Rachel gets all the attention. And, 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 and he's not even spending time with, with, with Leah, maybe. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say it. I'm making my own thing. I'm saying because this is what I believe could happen. If you don't love somebody, you don't spend time with him. It is so dangerous that if I don't show love to God, I don't spend time with God. So when we love somebody, when it, it is not something that we say, it is something that we act. Bishop Manny Nicker once preached a sermon and he said, love is a doing thing. It is an active word. It is a verb. It is not something that you say. It is a doing thing. It is active. <laughs> Wonderful. So when we say we love God, it should be an active action from our side. It should not be just something we say. It should not be something we say to, to, to look, to sound good and to sound spiritual and to sound being in the right place. We must act it. It is a verb, it's a doing thing. She's still not loved. Verse 34, again she conceived. <laughs> And then she gave birth to another son. You see, we can try and try again. We don't give up. Leah did not give up. See, she had the faith that the, 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 the next time, the next time. She had the faith that if she keep on doing what she's doing, God is going to change uh, the, the, the love for her. Beloved, we must not give up. Even if the situation is dark, don't give up. Hold on, hold on. Do what God wants you to do. Show your love and your compassion. Do the thing that God will honor and bless us with. We give food every day. People don't uh, acknowledge it or they don't, uh, they're not grateful for the food that you give. Some of them go away and say, Oh, it's again soup. Oh, it's again uh, chicken curry. Oh, it's again this or baked beans or whatever. They, they just come and they say they are so, so, so disrespectful even for the fact that you spend all the time to prepare the food with love. That does not mean we must give up. That does not mean that we should, 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 should react the same way they acted. We should not re return the favor. We should not do what they uh, uh, expect us to do. Now they're not going to give food because we don't like this food. If people are hungry, they will take it. But it is for us to be consistent. We must be consistent in what we do. We must not be moved by other people's opinions. Leah's uh, keep hearing, Leah keep experiencing that she's not loved, but she was not moved by other people's opinions. She had the faith that God will come through for her. She had the faith that Jacob will love her. She, 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 she loved so faithfully, even if she has to conceive children, she loved in faith that he will return her love. We must be consistent and have the faith that God will bless the fruits of our labor. Even if people don't acknowledge it, even if people don't, when people are grateful or grateless, but not, not grateful about it, but we are the children of God that don't give up. There is no way we give up. God has attached himself to us. This child's name was Levi. And immediately when I, when I say that name, this child's name is Levi. When I say that name, I know our minds are racing. But the Levites were loved by God and they were called by God to the priesthood. And when you call to the priesthood, you are called to, to, to such a sacred position that you have so much fellowship with God. And here, this is the child of somebody that's not loved. <laughs> this is Levi. 
which is the priesthood of God. So God is no respecter of person. Even if somebody comes into this world and they are not loved, they are loved by God. God does not look at the standards of men. He's got his own divine standards. And when you and I, we've got a purpose. There was purpose to the birth of these men, Reuben, Simeon, Levi. There was purpose to their birth. They were not just there because God wanted to keep Rachel childless and wanted uh, Leah to conceive all the time. No, there was purpose to what God was doing at that time. Leah learned. Leah saw that whatever I do does not change this man's mind. He still does not love. It is the third boy. It is the third blessing. He still does not love me. She allowed God to work in her life. She had faith. Now her faith shifts. Now she knows that she's not loved by men, but she's loved by God. Now when she conceived again, she gave birth to the fourth son. <laughs> she gave birth to the fourth son. And she said, this time, this time God has opened my spiritual eyes. This time after my conversation with God, when God heard me, he saw my affliction, he heard my afflictions, he heard that I'm not loved, and he, he attached himself to me through my son Levi, and now, this time, I have come to the realization, regardless what happens, regardless of the, the slandering, regardless of the gossip, regardless of the curses, regardless of the fact that people speak against me, regardless of the opposition being stronger, regardless of the attacks of the devil, this time I have the faith and I have the knowledge that I will praise God in any circumstance. Ah, this child's name was Judah. The Jewish word or the Hebrew word for it was Jehuda, which means I will praise the Lord regardless of my circumstances, regardless of what I experience, regardless of the slander, regardless of the curses, regardless of the attacks, regardless of any opposition to what I plan and God has planned for me, regardless of my whatever is all around me, regardless of these challenges, I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when this realization came, when she became content with the fact that this man will never love me, she said, my purpose is complete. She understood her purpose. So what happens now? Here we go. And God says, now I will have you stop having children. Now that God has reached his purpose in her life, now that she had fellowship with God and understood her purpose in the life of, 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 of Jacob and in the life of Israel, then God allowed her to stop having children. People say if you stop having children, there's something that you've done wrong. It's a curse. It is this, it is that. But if this is what God allowed to happen. Beloved, Rachel was loved but she never bare children. There was no children for Jacob from Rachel. We know the whole story. We know that Leah now saw that she cannot bear any more children and she made a plan. <laughs> she made a plan. But our plans is never God's plans. God had a purpose. She had faith. God used that faith to fulfill his purpose in the life of the Israelites, in the life of Jacob. But then when we start making our own plans, God will allow it. God is gentle, he's, 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 he's a faithful God, but he has a purpose for everything. We know that 
the kingdom of Israel was divided at one stage and there was 10 tribes on the one side and two tribes on the other. So it was Israel on the one side, the 10 tribes, the two tribes were Judah because it was Judah and Benjamin. The praise of God in the, in the, in the last born of Jacob. The, so, so, so that was the, 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 the kingdom of Judah. That's where the division came. So Judah had their own king and Israel had their own king. But let's look at how God orchestrates purpose in somebody's life. As we look at Esther chapter 2, verse 17, I'm just going to read verse 17. It says, now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women. And she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. We know how it started. Vashti disobeyed the king and the king asked his advisors. And sometimes it is important to know who your advisors are. Are your advisors, advisors divinely appointed? Are your advisors having your uh, favor? Do they have not just your favor, but do they have all the benefits that you may have from their advice? Are they in the right place? So he had his advisors, and in the end, Vashti was killed because she disobeyed the king. Beloved, we live under grace. We disobey God so much. If a, a human king can kill somebody that disobeys him, or somebody that comes in his presence without being invited can be, invited, can be killed, how much more with God, who is the supreme he, there is no other king like him. There's no other God like him. So how can we come in disobedience before God and expect to love? That is called grace. That's why Jesus came, grace personified. That's why he came to die so that we may have life. Here is Vashti, a Jewish girl in, in a foreign kingdom. She, she's a Jewish girl and she came and was chosen to be part of the, of the people that God, that the king wants, part of the virgins that the king wants to source, choose a queen from. And God again in his wisdom to fulfill the purpose for his people he allowed her to rise up above any other it doesn't mean that the other virgins were not beautiful it doesn't mean that the other virgins got different treatment that uh, she got different treatment than the other virgins it doesn't mean any of that it means that god allowed the favor to rest upon her when god chose you beloved and God choose me and any one of us. God allows the favor to make a way for us. Your gift will make room for you. Your gift will give you, bring you before kings. <laughs> that is when God is in control. He will bring you before kings and you will prosper in your purpose. There was someone that wanted to kill the Jews. Somebody tried to kill the Jews. The message comes to, 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 to Esther and, and the uncle sends the message and say to her, you know, you will not escape this persecution even if you're in the king's palace. So you must think about it if you were not called for a time such as this. You must think about it, beloved. You and I, we need to take uh, uh, make inspection of our lives. We need to know and make sure if we are not called for a purpose in a time such as this, we must not pass the buck and say, there are better preachers than me. It is not about the preacher, it is about the word. It is not about uh, preaching the word, it's about spreading the word. It is not about the, 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 the theology of the word, it is about the simplicity of Jesus' death and his resurrection. It is how simple the gospel is. God allows us to go through difficult times, challenging times, bad circumstances in order for us to learn. But it is not for us because God, we can get killed in some of these circumstances. We can get killed in some of these uh, challenges, but God does not allow it to happen because we need to tell somebody of how good and how great and how marvelous God is bringing us through circumstances. Somebody might experience the same thing and God allows us to speak. So it does not need to be a preacher. It does not need to be somebody. God places us in positions 
that we can use to the benefit of his people and the benefit of his kingdom. Here we have Esther being placed in the palace of the king, the highest authority in the kingdom, the highest authority in this foreign country, the highest authority where the, the proclamations are made. She has been placed in that position for a purpose. God allowed her to be in that position. Don't think that you have reached where you are without any person pur purpose. Don't think that God allows you uh, to become a great manager, regional manager, national manager, whatever it is. Don't allow, think that God allows you to be there without any purpose. There is a purpose for the position that you are currently filling out. God does things with purpose. We did not know if the persecution would proceed. Esther's uncle did not, he just know about the persecution. He didn't know how severe it would be. All he knew that God has chosen Esther. She must check with God. She's reminded to have fellowship with God. She's reminded to make sure that God hears her. She goes into fasting and praying. She says the Jews must fast and pray with her. She goes into fasting and she has fellowship with God. God heard. <laughs> God heard because when Esther came to the king unannounced, the king showed favor by pointing the scepter. She could have been killed. Beloved, she did not care because now was the time to step up in her purpose. You and I should not be scared of any negative action towards us, anything that would be detrimental to our well-being or whatever, because God has called us for a purpose. Let us not be scared, not be afraid, but let us go forth and stand up and fulfill our purpose that God has called us for. Today we have these two women that I concentrated on. There are many. There are many. God directs people into their purpose. We can see Ruth. Ruth was sent to Boaz. He did not come search for her. God sent you in your purpose. We, so we can go through the whole Bible. We will find that each and every woman that God dealt with had a purpose. Huh? And sometimes it was controversial. The woman at the well, she, had, she didn't have a good reputation, but she was chosen to be the first evangelist to go out and tell about the man, to tell about Jesus, to tell about somebody that can change their lives. Some were skeptical, some saw through her and say, but this is not the same woman anymore. And they listened. So we can go through the Bible, and we can see the faith that God implants in us. Our faith must grow. Our faith must be rock solid. We must not be moved. We are people of faith and purpose. And now we can include and say, this is not only for godly women. This is for godly men as well. For children of God, we must their faith and we must live in our purpose. May we experience the joy of the Lord. May we experience the favor of God. May we understand that God has called us for a purpose. May our faith be of such caliber that nothing can move us because we have faith like Leah had faith until the point that she says, now I understand that I need to praise God. <laughs> she, she, she went through all of this. She went through all the things that faith can bring in our lives. She, she did it all right, nothing wrong, until she realized that now my faith must not be misplaced. My faith must be in God. Beloved, may God strengthen us. May God make us realize 
that we have a purpose. May we know through the power of, of God's love that we are not just called to be uh, nice people on Zoom. We are not just called to be people uh, that speaks empty words. We are there to tell people about judgment day. We need to tell people about heaven and hell, the reality of it. We have been called for a purpose. Remember, God uses all of us and we're all part of one body. So I may not be the one that, that, that walks in the calling that God has called for somebody to pray over healing and deliverance. I may not be the one that God has called to prophesy, I, 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 but God has called me uh, to say that you must teach, you, know, you, must, you must study my word so you can teach my people and bring understanding. You must be a support to those that, that, that pray for healing. You must be a support to those uh, that I use to, to break bondage. Uh, so I cannot be everything, let us stop being been trying to be everything. We are not supermen and superwomen. We are God's children called for a purpose. Let our faith be in what God has called us for. I am faithful that through the teaching and the preaching that God will change lives. People will get understanding of God's word. They will get understanding of their purpose and they will do just what God wants them to do. Hold on, beloved. Don't give up. Don't give in. God is going to bring us to a point that we say, now I know. At this time, I will praise the Lord. Our praises will bring breakthroughs. And then we can go through the Bible and see what praise does. But God has called us to realize that in praising him, we get breakthrough. We understand our purpose. We walk in our purpose. And we are more than victorious. May God bless you. May you experience a beautiful Sunday. May you experience a, a, a beautiful month because the number eight means new beginnings. <laughs> Old things will pass away. There will be new beginnings. It's a new era in your life. It is, it is something that God orchestrates in your life because seven speaks of completion. It is completed because now it's time to have a new beginning in Christ. Experience the new beginning. Enjoy the presence of God. Have fellowship with God. Yes, have conversation with him. And just make yourself heard in the throne room of God. And watch and see how God will release his blessings. He will open up the windows of heaven. And the blessings will rain down. May God bless you. And may God keep you. And may he just let his face shine upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.